Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice polynomial system. This problem was actually shared by one of my fellow mathematicians, math 26039335. So I'll share the link down below. Thank you for the inspiration. I really liked the problem and I asked his permission if I could make a video and he gave me permission and here we are. So we have this system, x plus y multiplied by x squared plus y squared equals 85, and x minus y times x squared minus y squared equals 45. I'll be presenting two methods, even though I'm pretty sure there is a four, um, third and fourth method uh, for this problem. And I know some people can guess and check real quick because you can look at the factors of 85 and 45. Obviously, they have five in common, so you can use it, so on and so forth. So here's my first method. For my first method, I would like to expand everything. All right? so I want to clearly see what's going on here. And when you expand, you'll be a little surprised because it's going to be nice. So let's go ahead and distribute. You get x cubed plus xy squared plus x squared y plus y cubed. And that's 85. And the second equation is going to give you x cubed, something very similar, minus xy squared minus x squared y, I'm trying to write in alphabetical order, plus y cubed equals 45. So obviously having a common factor kind of encourages me to divide them and take out the 5, but I have a better uh, approach. I don't know if division is going to help. Probably could because we could um, get a cubic equation, which is probably uh, factorable in some sense. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add these equations up. And that's going to cancel out these two terms and these two terms. And we're going to end up with something super duper nice. 2x cubed plus 2y cubed equals 85 plus 45, which is 130. Division by 2, both sides, we get x cubed plus y cubed equals 65. Great, let's go ahead and save it because later on we're going to use that. And obviously this can be factored into x plus y multiplied by x squared minus xy plus y squared. So that is 65. Obviously, there is more than one way to write it, and we're going to take advantage of that as well. Now, here's the fun part. We add it. Why not subtract them, right? Uh, so let me go ahead and copy those equations here, but uh, the expanded forms. And now we're going to go ahead and subtract those two equations and see what happens. Add and subtract. That's what we're doing. The second one is pretty much the same thing, but with minus signs. And obviously, when you subtract, different things are going to cancel out, right? And to subtract, I need to negate the second expression and add. So in other words, add the opposite, because a minus b can be written as a plus the opposite of b, which is negative b. So negate, 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 and negate here. And then, of course, don't forget this one. Sometimes I do forget that. When I was in high school, I always forgot to change the second number. And when I solve a system, I always got it wrong. And then I'm like, what is going on? This is frustrating. Anyways, I still make those mistakes. x cube cancels out, y cube cancels out. We get 2xy squared plus 2x squared y equals 85 minus 45 is 40. Divide by 2 like before, xy squared plus x squared y equals 20. And does this tell you the factor? Yes, it does. Uh, allow me to write the x first because it's in alphabetical order and I'm pretty picky about that. Or you can say I have OCD. Okay, so we got like this equation, uh, which is obviously going to help us if we use another identity for x cubed plus y cubed. And what is that? That identity is the following x cubed plus y cubed equals x plus y cubed. And we use this a lot, remember, uh, with the cubic formula. That's how the cubic formula is derived, actually. So we can write it this way, which is very helpful. But wait a minute. I do know this product. Yay. I know this is equal to 20. So this becomes x plus y cubed minus 60. Uh-oh. I also know this because, remember, we just evaluated that and that was 65. Yay. So we can go ahead and plug it in here, 65. And now we got a very simple equation. x plus y cubed becomes 125 from here. And cubing, cube rooting both sides uh, as um, real. 
x plus y becomes 5. Great, what am I going to do or how do we proceed? I can plug it in so many ways, but this seems to be the easiest way. If x plus y is 5, xy is 4 because their product is 20. And now I have two numbers whose sum is 5 and whose product is 4. And I'm pretty sure you can tell uh, the numbers are 4, 1 and 1, 4. x being the first number all the time. So that's going to be our solution set. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So first method, expand, expand add and subtract, and use some identities, and you'll arrive at the result. So we kind of talked about division, right? I mean, division makes sense because, well, 85 and 45 might cancel out. But not only that, there's a good reason for that. I don't know if you paid attention, but the second expression actually can be factored a little bit. Why? Because x squared minus y squared is a difference of two squares. Yay. So from here, we get x minus y times x plus y times x minus y divided by the first equation x plus y times x squared plus y squared but remember we reversed the order so we're kind of dividing like this so that is 45 over 85 divide by 5 you get 9 over 17 such nice numbers right so now the, what do we have we need to simplify this so fives cancel out but not only that on the variable side x plus y also cancels out caveat x plus y does not equal zero and you're like duh come on it can't be zero because then the equation won't, won't be satisfied right so zero is very powerful it just multiplies and you know the whole thing is destroyed okay so we get this so this is like a perfect square perfect x minus y squared now cross multiply that is by 17 and this guy here 9 multiplied by x squared plus y squared and what does that look like? If, if you say quadratic equation, you got it right. But with two variables. Don't worry, we'll fix it. 17 times x squared minus 2xy plus y squared equals 9x squared plus 9y squared. Distribute 17x squared minus 34xy plus 17y squared equals 9x squared plus 9y squared. Put everything on the same side. Subtract 8x squared minus 34xy, subtract, you get plus 8y squared, kind of like symmetrical. Divide by 2, just to simplify the process a little bit, and then guess what? We're going to get rid of one of the variables because this is a homogeneous equation. And homogeneous equations are beautiful. Now you're going to see why I say they're beautiful. Uh, with differential equations as well as polynomial equations and probably some recurrence relations, so on and so forth, y equals kx does wonders. Now, in a homogeneous equation, you're allowed to do it. If you do it, you get 4x squared minus 17x times kx plus 4 times kx squared equals 0. Don't worry, something is going to cancel out. 4x squared minus 17kx squared plus 4k squared x squared equals 0. Now, you can take out x squared 4 minus 17k plus 4k squared equals 0. Obviously, k equals 0, I mean, x equals 0, is not going to satisfy the original system. You can tell, you just replace x with 0, you'll get y cubed equals 85, and y, y cubed equals 45. So that's meaningless. So we can cross it out, divide by x squared, whatever, and you get the following nice equation in a single variable. That's why homogeneous equations are super duper important. Now, how do you solve this? Come on. This is x method. Or you can use quadratic formula too, but I like the x method, so I'm going to introduce this one more time. You make like a big giant x. Multiply these numbers. You get 16. You put that number here, 16. And then this number, negative 17, you put that here. Now, the top number is always the product, and the bottom number is always the sum. So in other words, you're looking for two numbers whose product is 16 and whose sum is negative 17. And those numbers are negative 1 and negative 16. Their sum is negative 17 and their product is positive 16. Make sense? That allows you to split up the negative 17k. Let's do it. So that's the x method. And I learned this from a student. Thank you very much. So 4, 4k squared minus 1k minus 16k plus 4 equals 0. Without further ado, this is k times 4k minus 1 minus 4 times 4k minus 1. This is factorable by grouping. Uh-oh, graph is coming up. 
So we're going to hurry up. 4k minus 1 times k minus 4 equals 0. From here we get k equals 1 fourth or k equals 4. Let me tell you what happens with those values. If k is equal to 4, then we get y equals 4x. If you substitute that, you get x equals 1 and y equals 4. And if you substitute k equals 1 fourth, you get y equals 1 fourth of x. If you substitute that into one of the equations, doesn't matter which one, you get x equals 4 and y equals 1. So those seem to be the solutions to this system and there's only two pairs as we've seen before and let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick because i think the graph is awesome look at this isn't that beautiful especially the first one doesn't that look like an elliptic curve kind of does right but the second one is kind of more like a hyperbola or it kind of looks like a boomerang to me as well anyways this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.